have been blessed. Amen. And I think many of you have been blessed. God has shown us good. And we thank God once again for the teacher for tonight. He has really blessed my soul. And as he would come before us again this evening, let us pray with him and pray for him. That as God's word comes forth, that we will not only hear his word, but James say that we may be doers of his words. So this, at this time, I present to you uh, Reverend Willie Jackson, the pastor of Bible and Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Let me say good evening to everyone that's assembled. First, give an honor to God, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to the angel of this house, kind Pastor Moland, ministers, deacons, brothers, and sisters in Christ. It is the last night. Amen. Amen. Thankful for for the nights that we've had here, we pray that something has been said to, to encourage us as we think about the promises of God. Yes, sir. Again, we're thankful for having some members of Bible Wave. Y'all want to stand or wave or a few more? Amen. Amen. Church. Amen. This is good to do a little work. Yeah. All right. All right. At church. Yeah. Sometimes I'll pop out there and ain't nobody there. And now I pop out there, it's a whole bunch of somebody there. So I right. might have to find some more stuff for us to do. Amen. Yeah. But throughout this week, we've been talking about the promises of God. Tuesday, we begin trying to put you in mind that the promises of God are yes and amen. The Lord's intention or promise started with the first mention of us. He yeah. created mankind in Genesis 1 and 26 and declared that that creation was very, was very good. Not only was that creation very good, but it was in the very image of God. So plainly stated, when you look at me, you should see the reflection of my father. All right. Should. All right. Don't forget the whole Old Testament if I doubt that's not always, not always true. Second night, we were talking about the, the covenants. We talked about the five major covenants, one given to Noah, David, Moses, Abraham, and the one articulated in Jeremiah 31. We broke these covenants down in two categories. The Caesarean vassal covenant, which is a conditional covenant, and then the royal grant, which is unconditional. And we now are partakers of the royal grant side of the covenant because much as the Lord had stamped himself in the other covenant, that he will be their God, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. He knew we couldn't hold up our end of the bargain, or if we could have, we failed miserably. Yeah, right. So he sent Jesus, and now we covenant by belief and yeah. by faith. So now for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall Amen. be saved. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever to believe in him should not perish, but have ever. God said it was surety he was going to establish some things. And it's good just to know that you can take the Lord at his word. Last night, and we talked about what are the promises of God. We looked in the Old Testament, we looked in the New Testament, and then we looked specifically what Jesus said in the Gospels. And what we were trying to put forth is sometimes we just live below the promises of God. We act as if the blessings of the Lord aren't in our lives, and many times we even go out as a surety, mad at God for unanswered prayers, but the blessing that God in His sovereignty no, sometimes we don't need what we think we need. 
we also spoke that sometimes we confuse our needs and our wants. He'll supply every need according to his riches and glory. Look and see the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. See how he takes care of them. Won't he take care of you? Amen. Many times we've confused ourselves and we've tried to put our needs in the want category. And truth be told, if we got everything that we want, You know the response, you just don't want to say it. <laughs> Sometimes it's just good to hear no. <laughs> They're not here tonight, but my wife heard a choir is, is singing the national anthem out of Cedar Park to, to do, um, that, they're, that they're doing. So she is not here this evening, but you can don't, but you can tell her if you want to. <laughs> her and my mother-in-law don't say too many no. At school, teachers don't ever tell my children no. Even some of the good church members don't tell them no. So to make sure they hear enough no's. <laughs> I always say no. All right. All right. My daughter thinks she's slick, so she might work it to a yes or to a maybe. But sometimes we just need to hear hear no. All right. And sometimes we just need to hear not right now. Amen. So I want to challenge you. Well, as we wrap this up on the last night, find you some of your favorite promises. To you. Not to anybody else. Ones that have meaning, ones that encourage your heart, ones that give you hope on dreary and dark days. Find you a set of them and declare them as your promises. Right, right. And I got this book a long time ago, 1987. I wasn't even a year or a little over a year in the ministry. Got this. It looks new. You can put my name on it. Well, I can go through here and I picked out some. But this Bible promise book. Gives a whole lot of different categories, and then this one is al alphabetized. So some of the stuff I may not want, but some of the stuff I can get to, and so some of it encourages me. So I like the God's faithfulness section, but I may not look as often in the God's correction section. Don't mean it's not good. All right. Just might want to look at that faithfulness section a little, a little more often. It's got a health and troubles section. It's got a God's love, a loving God section. It's got a God's protection section. Mm -hmm. but it's also got a self-denial section. We can look in there. It's got a wisdom. It's got a whole bunch of them in here, but find you some. So go to your papers. If you would, turn right here where it says, My Favorite Promises. And I picked out a few, and someone else wrote some of this, but I'm in agreement because I formulated my opinion around why they're my favorite. First one, 2 Peter 1 and 4, because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. We talked about that last night. These are the promises that enable you to sh share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. I like that God gives me a way out. He gave me a way out in the salvific sense, but he also gives me a way out in a day-to-day -day living, writing, walking, holy sense. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Some of y'all said, well, on Tuesday, you said that, uh, on Wednesday, days are running together. Wednesday, you said, when you were talking about the covenant, that, that don't just stop there and ask for that because it may be a 70-year promise. Well, I'm thankful that we're in the dispensation of grace now. So the Lord, when he acts, I'm not coming out of exile. I'm free by grace and mercy. The exiles and the troubles I may find in my life, I put myself in. God didn't have to to get my attention. Yeah. So I believe in promises deferred. Y'all got quiet. Sometimes the Lord is going to do, he's just not going to do right now. And you know why I need him not to do everything I ask him to do as quick as I think he should? Because patience is a virtue. Yes, and you ever want to meet some impatient folk? Stay in the church, I was going to get to that part. I was just kind of 
everybody say, in the church. Yeah. His thing, you, you, you serve a God that, that can do whatever he wants. He's sovereign, can act. And then you come to church and you want everything done and you go to your house and take your time. You go to work and look important and working right before quitting time. <laughs> you don't apply urgency to your day till you have to. Okay. I'm really got trouble with this one, but it's going to say what you need to say. A bunch of retirees at the church. That's a blessing. Until I listen about their day. <laughs> We was doing not much of nothing, not anything really important. Then we had coffee. Then we did some more nothing, not really anything important because we don't have a job. And then we read the paper. Then we decided we'd get something to eat. Then we came back to the house, just thinking about doing too much of nothing. I was like, man, that's, a, I can, that's one of my favorite days, if I can have that. But but it was true. Sometimes we need to understand that promises are deferred. We we can't have everything just right now. Yeah. But the Lord still says, "For I know I have the plans I have for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope." Sometimes you just need to know that on the other side of things, the Lord is holding off what you need because it's going to be timely when you receive it. Some promises of God you can't handle yet. You're not ready for yet. But if the Lord said it, it's so. Here, so then we, we gotta understand sometimes promises come forth not just in the Holy Writ, but they come in the vision that's given to the pastor of the church. So he says, we want to do. And then what did everybody say? When? Sometimes the Lord doesn't give you a win. Sometimes it's just a blessing to know that he's going to do it. Sometimes the, the Lord says, I'm just going to make, this is just going to come to pass, and you got you got to wait a while. So sometimes you got to realize the promises need to be deferred. And the, the things that challenge us in our lives, and I, I talk to, to young ladies and middle-aged ladies, boy, when they're looking for a husband, <laughs> They ain't trying to hear the wait on the Lord. <laughs> Give them a good enough credit score and <laughs> open the door a couple times. So they'll be trying to see what I'm doing on Saturdays. <laughs> But sometimes promises are, are deferred. Some of us are asking the Lord for promotion and elevation. And he just equipped us enough to get where we are right now. And so sometimes you just need to bide your, bide your time. But one thing that troubles the church is too many in the church don't walk by faith, they walk by ambition. So they're supposed to be following, but instead they stab in the person that's in front of them in the back because they can get the position. They're in charge and don't run anything any other place, but they come to the church and they want to be And then so what, what, what happens is, is sometimes it's just not for you to have it right now, but it don't mean that you try to shortcut it, go around God to get what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about those same two children that I got. I say no a lot, but they know if I'm not right there in earshot, I'm on hold. <laughs> Sometimes I just got to yell behind them acting like I can't hear. I already said no. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when the Lord replies, we don't understand. We sing a song around, we all sing a song. We'll understand it better. <laughs> Boy, if you really knew what that was saying, you, you would stop singing. <laughs> <laughs> We are often tested. 
you know, all that. You love that. That sounds good. You know what you're really saying. You're saying that what you had expectation of is not going to happen right now. And then you don't know when it's going to happen, but if it just happened to not happen, you'll understand. It's saying no. Sometimes you want to face a no that it's not going to happen to come your way. Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Sometimes you just need to put some of this on the Lord. You just need to come and lay it at the altar. All right. All right. Lord got broad shoulders. Mine may get a little weary and a little tired. But the Lord got brought to me. So, so if I'm able to do that of the truth, I like that promise because you know what? It means I don't have to carry so much weight. Yeah. I don't have to carry so many burdens. I, some things I just don't have to bear. Yeah. But when I put them with the Lord, I can endure. Yeah. 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 A lot of time when I think about that, I think of a spotter with somebody doing the bench press. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to know that you, if you get a little too too hard, you strain a little bit, you got somebody that can pick it up off of you. Yeah. And that's the visual that I said, that's why it's one of my favorite promises. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31, he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will weak, weak, used for me to say, will become weak and tired, and young men will fall and exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord will find strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. Sometimes I just need the Lord to, to buckle me up. Yeah. To hold me up. Yeah. To let me soar a little bit. Yeah. Here's one thing about the Christian faith. There's many dynamics that equate to movement in the Christian faith. So we talk about our walk. We talk about running this race. But sometimes you just need to realize you can soar like a, an eagle too. Because as the truth, walking will get you there. Running will get you there quicker. But it's a lot more comfortable when you soar. So I'm not saying anything about your walk. I'm not saying anything about you running your race. But I am saying that the Lord promised sometimes he'll just hold you and just let you soar. And sometimes when he lets you soar, he puts you above and you're able to look down at that which is troubling you. Yeah. See, when you soar, you get to the other side. You get to the other side quicker. Philippians 4 and 19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. The Lord will take care of you. Sometimes I just need to know that the Lord will take care of me. You know why? Because truth be told, folks, Amen. folks just don't take care of you like they, like they should. <laughs> I went through Dairy Queen drive through and Oh. <laughs> they, they got me to make a commitment. Uh -huh. Said so they had chicken fried steak, five forty nine. I looked at my wallet that was in the budget. <laughs> I threw it up there, and the lady was like, "Okay." And I said, well, "Give it to me with no mayonnaise, because me and mayonnaise don't get along." She said, "Okay." So I was like, "All right." So I saw them make the sandwich, but it came with fries. So I'm looking, the sandwich came out, looked like there was some steam coming off of it. Today's a good day. Look behind me, some people wonder why I'm not moving. Then I realized I'm not moving. And then so she tried to ask me for stuff that I don't need. She said, you need ketchup? No, I don't need any ketchup. And she waited a little bit before, do you need any ketchup? No, no ma'am, I, I don't need any. don't need any ketchup. So finally, the fries came out. Excuse me, the fries came from somewhere. They, I was like, boy, this is going to be hot. I'm going to have to wait. Oh, no, it was good and chilly. And then she took all the people's ketchup and put it in the bag. Saying, can I get you anything else? 
give me some hot fries and take these. But I didn't say that because they may know. There we don't buy church. I'm not saying I would have said something. But I'd have been a little brave if I'd have been over here on the one and same scooter. I'm just saying what I'm saying. But 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 sometimes folks just just ask it for what they, they can do for you and, and they come, people come up short. Yeah, yeah. But the Lord yeah. he takes care. Right. Yeah. 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 Romans 8, 7, 37 to 39. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor fears. Yeah. For today, nor a war is about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, the earth above, indeed. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sometimes it just makes me smile and I get a little giddy because nothing can separate me from the Lord. <laughs> nothing. My circumstances, situations, people, finances, nothing. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. And then if you realize what you're not separated from, guess what? The love of God many times is hard to understand. It is. I said don't do what you do, but I still love you. I gave you all my word as a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And you don't never open it up, I still love you. Come around here during offering time and you never pay any tithes, you just give a tip, but I still love you. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yes, You're more faithful to the scratch offs in the lottery than to be, but I still love you. <laughs> you drink a little wine, but it ain't the communion wine, but I still love you. Yeah. You're burning some stuff, but it ain't incense, but I still love you. Sometimes you just can't, and just having peace. You know what makes you appreciate peace? The chaos that many times is in our lives. You're just holding out just for, you don't need much peace, you just need some peace. When you go to bed and just, just go to bed. But sometimes the world will weigh on you. You finally get to sleep, and your troubles will show up in your dreams. Yeah. And I'm not talking about any nightmare on the Elm Street stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but sometimes trouble will find you. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. But oh, when you got peace. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the Lord just declares it all out. He's just saying, peace, <coughs> be still. <coughs> And all that stillness is not just in all that's around us. The best piece is the one that's eternal. Right here, internal, inside. And it's internal because it's eternal. See, so the Lord's not giving us a temporary peace. He's trying to give us that peace, that compassion, understanding, which means that, that I have peace, but sometimes I have to pause and realize and try and figure out how I got. Here it is, the storm clouds, the, the rain and stuff, and all of a sudden you find yourself there in the eye of the storm. 
And then you think you're just supposed to be in the eye of the storm and you look around, ain't no more storm. Sometimes the peace just compasses understanding. But you come to, to some of us. Oh, we don't want people to have peace. Let's be honest, this is, this is a more colorful conversation to talk about chaos and calamity. To talk about negative things. It, it's, you know, the Lord sure gave me a peaceful rest last night. That's pretty, that, you can add some stuff to that. That's pretty much enough. Yeah. But if I get to tell you, I was all up all night and I was pacing through the house, I was running through here, and it seemed like nothing was ever going to go right. And then before I knew it, I, I slept down, and it, as you can hear, here's how people say, I, I went to sleep and I looked at the clock, and then the next thing I knew, the alarm was going off. The next thing I knew, I was going up. And then I was right into the next day. And then what you did is you just declared it, and you said, That's nothing. I'm right. So what else happened? And then I didn't have peace here, and I didn't have peace here. But when you just have peace, that compassion and understanding, that's it. There's a period and explanation point. And what happens, we need to put more periods and explanation points in the things that happen in our lives rather than keep back with the same chaos day after day. Yeah. 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 And Christian folks talk it up big. <laughs> Now, my God is mighty and powerful and can do above whatever I ask or think until I haven't asked and I haven't thought about it. I just opened my mouth talking about it. And the devil sitting up there laughing. You say, Cheshire cat? You sit over there, you got just a big grin on there saying, it didn't take much. It's an easy win. Some of us. Just dangling in the wind, waiting for the next thing to throw us off. But I love this one here. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him, then you will be for who then I like Romans 10, for whosoever shall call upon me. Because sometimes it's just good to be in the whosoever category. Romans 6, 23, for the way to sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The promises of God are powerful and awesome to grasp. I pray that these scriptures about God's promises were helpful to you today. And get your own scriptures. Because, because people at church play, I, I, play a, I used to have a, a game I played with the youth church. And we're all friends, right? <laughs> I was really trying to pass the time. And I didn't have any more revelation of thought. So I said, why don't we play Simon Says, except for I made it, Reverend Jackson Says. All right, all right. Here's what happens as you get older. <laughs> Reverend Jackson says, now. <laughs> but my own kids, who wouldn't even thought of them, should be playing Reverend Jackson says. <laughs> and one thing about the game is a couple of them, they, they're, they're close friends, some of our young millennials at the church. Two of them, and they're both two sets of sisters. One of each of the sisters won, and the other ones did. And I didn't know how much of an impression that it made on them. Listen to what I'm saying. They want to win, Reverend Jackson says. Here's the thing. I haven't really played Reverend Jackson says in a long time. That's when I was a youth minister. And they were second and third grade. So I looked back, and I said, Sometimes, when you look back, some things are in the past, but then they can have application in the present. Yeah. And so, we made play Reverend Jackson says, we're not going to do it like across the pulpit or nothing like that, because I don't know how much the rest of the congregation would be ecstatic about it. <laughs> <laughs> they just probably going to act like they have here when I'm saying. Anyway, but. One thing is, is a surety of, of one thing as much as I used to hear and I heard it early in my Christian relationship was these three words, God 
He is love. All right. All right. And then sometimes they would say Jesus is love. Yeah. Matter of fact, y'all, some of y'all can remember the Commodores cut our album. I got it. Still got it. I can put it on there. And they had a song, Jesus Love, Lot Richie Before His Curl Got Wet, and everything. He was singing that. <laughs> Begat loves him, also is begotten of him. Let you, let you know if you come from love, you stay in love. Five and four. For whoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So I can be an overcomer. Amen. Five thirteen. These things have I written unto you that you might believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the request that we desire to maybe read a little bit different in the King James. But sometimes it's just good to know that you're heard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Get a little personal tonight. Yeah. Many people are affected because they don't think anybody cares and they don't think anybody listens. Right. Right. And of the truth, the church has got to start to get a good black eye Come on. of the place of hard of hearing. Right. That you can come with whatever you're facing, but we're really not trying to hear that because we got all these programs and activities that we're doing, so we can't hear you. We know that you're grieving, that your heart is broken. We know that right now you're in a circumstance where you just need hope, and you came to the place where you thought it was, but the sad thing is you meant the people that went there. Yes, church is getting black eyed because people will see the name of our church. All right, all right. And it doesn't have a good association. Come on. They'd rather stay on the outside because they didn't met all those other hard-headed, knucklehead Baptists. They didn't met all of this. And just figured that, that they're not trying to meet no, no new enemies. So they'll stay on the outside. So sometimes it's just good to know that you're a pervert. Let's, let's, let's offend some people. Sometimes amongst your brothers and sisters, you can't share just how you're feeling because they get on the phone. If you ever want to be in an awkward circumstance in church, be there and people looking in your face and you know they're talking about you, but they're also talking about how much they love the Lord. That's a tough thing. When you know they scandalize your name, when you know they ran with the gospel, when you know that they ran with truth, and when you know they did that, and then you're supposed to be in there, come on, God. it's tough. So sometimes you just need to be able to call upon the Lord because horizontally you've got disappointment. But I'm thankful that the Lord works this with a vertical relationship. Second John, for the truth's sake, which dwells in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I like that one. You know why? It gives me a whole bunch of stuff that I need. I need as much grace, mercy, and peace, and definitely I need to have it from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, and then I need to have it in truth and love. And when I get it that way, it don't get much better than that. Amen. Third John, beloved, I, I, 
which above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. Too many of these prosperity merchants get behind pulpits, promising people the dream, and they didn't see the dream develop, but they saw, sure saw them living high on the hall. Mm -hmm. See, I need my soul to prosper, because guess what? Money can come, and money can go. One thing I know, if my soul is well, come on. See, see what? You can be broke. Now I'm not talking about the broke that you come accustomed to. When you don't have anything but something's coming. See, a lot of our broke is waiting on payday. That's not broke. I'm talking about broke, and there ain't no payday. Now I'm talking about broke, and you already done made all your arrangements. You want your last arrangement. I'm talking about that. So, so when you're there, you can be there, but if the Lord's there with you, guess what? You are all right. Jude says, But you, beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Verse 24. Now unto him. Yeah. We're not done yet, but, but you know when you get to the now unto him. Yeah. It's about chicken time. Now unto him. Now unto him. Who is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And if it's me, I say, and let the church say, Amen. <laughs> you might say that in the Bible where church is talking to you. Then we get into the book of Revelation. A lot of people in the church scared of the book of Revelation. You know why? Because there's a lot of poor teachers of eschatology. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act like halfway, act like a seminary, just for a couple minutes when we just get back to it. I'm a post-tribulationist. That means that when the rapture comes, I'm not going to be here. Part of the confusing part of the teaching of eschatology in First and Second Peter, and then going to figure out the weeks in Daniel, and then figuring out the stuff that's happening in Revelation is, is a lot of people are concerned about saved folk being here at a time when they've already been removed. So some things don't concern me in a personal sense, but they do concern me in an evangelical sense. Amen. So it's truly to understand and wrap your heads around that. You got to understand that you hate what may happen when the bowls start coming, the plagues start coming, and all that happens because you don't want nobody to be there, yeah. especially not anybody you knew or could have pointed them in another direction. Yeah, right, right, right. So don't be scared of the book. Well, there's some good promises in there. Amen. Y'all still looking a little worried about it. <laughs> Revelation 1 and 3, Blessed is he that reads, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Yes, Verse 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loves us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us a kingdom, and priest unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You have been made.
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. To him that overcomes, I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Now to talk. I got a throne. Room at my house. <laughs> but it ain't really that special. It's useful, all right, but it's not special. Y'all looking at me? Very strange. <laughs> In Spanish, it's called a basura. Thank you. I'm talking about bathroom. That's the throne. I'm the throne. That's the throne. That's how you got one too. I mean, if you ain't country, it's inside. <laughs> Y'all been living well too long. <laughs> if you ain't never had an outhouse experience, you really hadn't lived. <laughs> uh, my family's from East Texas on my dad's side, my grandma's side. <laughs> Down there by Harrelton, Hallsville, Jefferson County, Texas. Beautiful country in the middle of nowhere. It's this country. You knew where you were going, as the, the, the color of the, the dirt on the road would get lighter or darker. We didn't have till recent, like recent, recent signs. And then nobody knows where they go in. <laughs> and I can remember, you know, me and my grandma and Dallas, and she's like, well, we're going to stay overnight in, in the, the family's house out here. She said, I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to stay on it. It's had some better days. And I'm excited. I'm there with my grandma. She said, look around. Living room? <laughs> Bedroom? <laughs> Kitchen? <laughs> With the dining room? Right. The another room? Oh, that's emptiness. <laughs> then all of a sudden, as if Revelation was coming to smack you in the back of the head, when you go outside, <laughs> You open that door, you figure it out. <laughs> hey, man, back to you. Uh, verse 5 and 9. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals thereof. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us unto our God a kingdom and priest. And we shall reign. 7.16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore, neither shall the sun strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. 11.15, and the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. And ever. 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. And such the second death has no power. For they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. We don't know how long forever is. But if you won't pause a thousand years in the midst of forever. Forever is a long time. Uh, this is what I was told about forever. It said, imagine a little hummingbird taking one grain from the beaches in Florida, flying it all the way to California, dropping off that one grain, then going back to Florida and getting to all the sand of the beaches of Florida. We're in California. And if you want to know what forever is, uh, that's almost forever. Uh, <laughs> all right. Do, do. 
Revelation 21, 4, and God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Sometimes you just need to celebrate that what you're going through right now, it's got an expiration date. Too many of us want to hold on to things like it's not going to be over. It's not forever because it's not your forever. It's just your right now. And truth be told, if that's all your right now is, hold up to you and say, I don't. <laughs> Revelation 21, 16. He said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I give unto him that is thirsty of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Look about it. Look at that. The Lord been claiming, folks. Come on. From the Old Testament to the end of the New Testament. He will be their God and, and they'll be his son. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. 22, 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hears say, Come, and let that who is thirsty come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life free. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself knowing that you're in a number that you weren't supposed to be in. That you're going to, be, that you're going to walk in heavenly places that, that you weren't supposed to be in. Sometimes you just need to realize that what the Lord already worked out and what he promised you is greater than what you have come to have understanding. So I can't even imagine. Yes, sir. Tamil Van Singh's song said, I can only imagine. Yeah. Sometimes I get my spiritual imagination, getting ready to wrap this up. Thank you for your, your attention this week. But as much as you need to get your own promises, you need to use your imagination. Yes, sir. Now I'm talking about some whimsical and, and, and fairy tale stuff, but use your imagination and see what it really will be to be in the presence of the Father forever. What, what does that mean? I think a lot of people talk about going to heaven. But if you've already been made a relationship with the Lord, that's already so it hasn't happened yet. So sometimes you need to take time and imagine. And then realize this. John, the beloved, didn't have enough words to try to describe what he saw. It was just what he had reference point on. So I don't say anything is amiss with God's word. But I do know this. Sometimes you just can't say it. Something so beautiful, something you just can't articulate how wonderful God is. Sometimes you just can't, can't, can't. It, it, it just wells up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you just can't get it. So use your studies and your spiritual imagination. When, 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 when the winds and the storms blow, use your spiritual imagination. See yourself on the other side. Of it. Yes. When you get down on your knees and you know it, it, that, that by the will of God, what you've already asked and petitioned because you're already in right relationship and right standing is going to happen, then get up acting like it happened. Scare some of your brothers and sisters. <laughs> I don't understand how you can think like that. God got a good track record. So I can take him at his word, but I also know that sometimes I got to show that I really believe. Sometimes we come to Thanksgiving too late. All right. Talking to a friend I went to high school with yesterday to get ready to really wrap this up. Talking about going to see the Cowboys, God's team. Said, said, man. I said, I made it on the free time it looked like that I had would be on Thanksgiving. He said, it looked like the only time, the first time I would have maybe on Thanksgiving. And I said, I can't go. But I can think about it. Because I can't sell that to nobody in my family. <laughs> that I'm not going to be part of Thanksgiving when it's Thanksgiving time. Yeah. Just can't sell that. Be people and seeing the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, right? Actually, 
a lot of y'all in church. You didn't miss the time of Thanksgiving. You came in late because your faith didn't meet God when he told you he was going to act. You had to wait to see it. You had to wait to everybody else testified about it. When did you start getting early on the Thanksgiving? And then you want to know how you can make sure that you're early on the Thanksgiving? Thank God first. That's it. Just thank God first. Lord, I thank you for how you're working that I haven't yet seen. Illuminate my understanding. My faith help me to walk in your spirit. Lord, that you can show me the designs and plans that you have for me as an individual affecting your church and affecting your kingdom. Lord, just show me right now. And I thank you for what you've already done and what I've yet to understand. Will that be a more effective prayer than saying, Lord, I'm treating you like Santa Claus. I'd like this car. I'd like this job. I'd like this promotion. I'd like her. I'd like him. I'd like this thing. And I'd like that depreciable asset. Sometimes you just need to get real and say, Lord, I'm just standing on your promise. <laughs> Second Peter 1 and 2. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our own knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. The Lord has given and promised you everything you need for a godly life. So you've got to ask yourself some questions. Are you experiencing everything you need to live, live a godly life? Probably not. Do, does that mean that he hasn't given you some of the things you need to live a godly life? No. It just means that you are personally connecting to or experiencing some of the things God already has for you. So how do you fix that? In order to take my seat. So pray for wisdom and revelation that God's spirit within you will help you understand what he's already given you so that you can experience those things in life. God bless you as often.